Act One Scene One A grove with the chapel and shrine of St. Hilda. In the latter lamps are burning, and the doors are closed. The sun is rising. Claudia is discovered, leaning against the pillar of the shrine, left. Hail, welcome morn! At length thy rising glories gleam on the convent spires, and lo! Yon lamps with fainter rays illume the shrine's arched windows where Adelgita watches. Sure, if virtue ever found peculiar favour from high heaven, her prayers are heard, and Giscard lives and triumphs. A bell tolls, and nuns are seen descending. Hark! Twas the convent bell. And see, the abbess to chant their matins in yon chapel leads her white-robed train. Ah, heaven-devoted sisters, how wise that choice which from her pangs exempts you, who weeps away the night, and dreads at morning to hear a son or husband lives no more. The abbess of St. Hilda enters with a train of nuns. Claudia, kneeling. Most honoured lady, at thy feet in duty suppliant I bend. May the saint's blessing, daughter, aid thee to struggle against a sinful world, and guide thy pilgrim steps to grace and goodness. Claudia rises. Ha! Huh? Wherefore burn those lamps? In yonder shrine, with prayer and penance, has Apulia's princess passed the long night, imploring heaven that morn might bring glad tidings of her lord in safety. Well may she rue that day when Michael Duca, Byzantium's exiled emperor, sought these shores, and sued at Giscard's feet for aid and shelter. His suit was granted, and perhaps ere this, that life on which depends Apulia's welfare has perished, by some grecian rebel's sword and can such fierce alarm st hilda's abbess doubts she of heavenly love or heavenly justice has virtue guardian angels if she has then guardian angels watch over giscard's safety against that virtue weigh the cause he fights for the cause he fights for is an exiled king's weigh too that exile's guilt which lost him empire he who that empire seized was guiltier far erred michael still alexius was his subject wronged were the greeks still michael was their king what then are subjects bound and sovereigns free free to be proud vindictive cruel false in fine to be what michael was no mother but that which michael was he is not now his power is crushed led by his weeping daughter suppliant i saw him kneel at giscard's throne and none to giscard ever knelt in vain i feel like giscard feel that heart is marble which heaves no sigh at sight of ruined greatness and hate that light which only glares to show faults which affliction's iron hand has chastened claudia thy blame is just i own my error and when reproof swells on my lips again i'll think he suffers and reserve my censure for those who sin and prosper means your princess to join our matin rites she waits your coming tis well going yet comes not claudia straight i'll follow but lo byzantium's princess beauteous imma bends to this shrine her steps o oh, chide not mother if from your pious rites I steal some moments to whisper comfort to yon royal mourner. Chide thee? Nay, Claudia, take my heart's best wishes to aid thy gracious office. Now, sisters, to the chapel. Farewell, daughter. Exeunt abbess and nuns into chapel. So sad, I fear, I fear our unowned youth. Ah, why is virtuous love so rarely happy? enter emma and ladies emma speaking to herself still does he live son does he see thee still or that pure blaze which fires the orient sky so bright to others is it dark to him o oh, father father couldst thou but think like me a straw-thatched cottage lothair and you would fill my heart's whole circle 
and then who would might wear byzantium's crown so early from thy couch my princess oh such a night my claudia such sights such bloody glaives such burning towns filled all my broken dreams no news yet from durazzo lady none but soon oh dread suspense my father's throne perhaps his life hangs on this battle's issue perhaps ere this our good our glorious champion has signed in blood our ruin and his own and adelgita soon or giscar's course will curse the day she pitied exiled emma claudia artfully perhaps lothaire too emma catching the name with eagerness ay that good lothaire he he the gentlest loveliest bravest best he whose kind arms on the adriatic waves from pirates saved my life and dearer honour oh ere i hear those words lothaire has perished come friendly death and join me to lothaire lothaire a foundling youth a nameless warrior and thou byzantium's princess oh i know it know that my passion's folly ruin madness but still i love and loving still must think thy deeds lothaire more noble than my birth thy heart lothaire more precious than my treasures and one fond glance shot from thine eyes more brilliant than all the jewels in my father's crown see where that father comes he frowns away then i dare not meet him now crosses to left what fear you princess those frowns are not for you alas alas when thus he frowns he's ever fearful claudia he had a page no fairer sweeter child e'er blessed a mother dear my father loved him yet stung with sudden rage oh can i tell it he stabbed him stabbed the innocent boy oh heaven how painful tis to mark a parent's errors and not esteem where duty bids us love he comes fly claudia fly exeunt into the chapel enter michael duca and dorsitas i'll hear no more must i not sleep nor wake but sung to rest or from my slumbers roused with giscard's praises the screech owl's boding cry the approaching howl of famished wolves the chant of midnight witches nay in my only child's expiring groan were music to the praise of him i hate and wherefore hate him serves he not your cause is it not for you that now before durazzo his troops are leaguered and his life exposed is it not for you now be that hour for ever cursed which saw the emperor of byzantium suppliant implore a norman pirate's aid i was not born to ask but to command my task was to confer not sue for favours yet now by giscard's aid through giscard's bounty it is given me to exist ah curses curses i sink oppressed by a weight of obligations and each fresh service seems an added crime yet in his eyes whose interest they advance even crimes might well look fair no no the life and empire at my choice i'd rather plunge in neighbouring etna than own life and empire to this new cato's grace this norman brutus but last night dercetus a ruffian hot with wine cried lo where goes the pensioned emperor had he ruled like Giscard, he need not here exist on Giscard's arms. Gods, what strange patience must that man possess, who calmly listens to a rival's praises, nor loathes that glory which obscures his own. Crosses to right. Dorsetus aside. The ungrateful tyrant chills my blood with horror. What sayest thou, slave? If thus his sight afflicts you soon come the hour when you shall meet no more that hour is past if phocian's sword be sharp phocian 
that persian slave who left otranto three days since then are over conveyed to Phocian my mandate midst the battle's heat and tumult to plunge his sword in giscard's heart oh emperor then will i seize my rival's falling sceptre use it to strike alexius from my throne and placing a delgita there salute a queen of byzantium and of michael's heart will she accept that heart she will she must what she the model of all wives all women whose passion for her lord on man never doted woman as dotes on giscar adelgita her love her virtue there's the charm dercetus but oh to a bliss to bend this stubborn beauty crush the proud fabric of her idol honour and while she weeps to view its ruins teach her she is fond and frail and false in short a woman crosses left like claudia's lips she charged me here attend her the organ is heard and hark the organ speaks the matins o'er the doors unclose she comes retire dercetus exit dercetus the doors of the shrine open center adelgita is discovered in mourning kneeling at an altar emma claudia the abbess and nuns surround her during the following speech emma kneels to michael duca and seems to receive his blessing chaste sisters take my thanks your holy comfort was balm to my torn heart though sad i'm tranquil though cheerful i'm resigned and now submissive i will meet heaven's will let heaven or smile or frown just is thy thought and for the world twere well thought all like thee now pardon gracious princess for convent duties call me hence dear mother use your free will your will is my best pleasure abbess and nun return to the convent adelgita to claudia friend join the train yon height o'erlooks the bay thence mayst thou first discern the bark which brings me those tidings which i long yet dread to hear oh be thy office mine with restless eye i'll watch the waves no not a speck shall scape me and when at length i spy the wished-for sail so swift i'll speed i'll make the zephyrs jealous to find their wings outstripped my kind sweet emma emma kissing her hand my friend my brother claudia come exit with claudia now princess obedient to your summons we're alone and what i've now to say requires no witness when driven by desperate rebels from byzantium twas here you sought protection say twas here i found it our means were small our court can boast no splendour but what was ours we gave and gave it nobly gave it with freedom which endeared the gift e'en at this hour my lord beneath durazzo sustains your cause he does his wealth is lavished his blood is risked for you i own his favours sure if to man ere man owed gratitude to him i owe it crosses to left your gratitude tis his and his of right none doubts it sure none should none dares none does know you that scroll showing a letter michael starting ha faithless slave aside the letter i sent to phocian robbers slew the bearer and midst his plunder was this writing found straight to my hands twas given for e'en those robbers whose blood if seized had streamed by giscard's justice rejoiced to save that precious life which he for whom that life as risked would fain have taken michael aside confusion here it stands the ungrateful name it's not thy hand thy seal and were these wanting does not the inhuman business ten joins declare that none but michael was the writer canst thou deny michael aside my heart can bear no more and i must vent its rage or die yes princess yes twas my hand which traced that plan of death 
and from my soul I wish the murder done. I hate thy Giscard, hate him fiercely, deadly, and wouldst thou know what most excites my hate? He's a Delgita's husband. A Delgita, surprised. How? What cause? Princess, I love thee. A Delgita, starting, then after a moment's pause, with contempt. Thou! To frenzy love thee. And with what strange, what fierce, what desperate passion judge by this rash avowal. Those bright eyes, if I am guilty, lighted me to guilt. They bade me murder Giscard. They seduce me suppliant to clasp the Norman pirate's knees. They make me feel those stars of Michael's fortune. Michael were wretched on Byzantium's throne unless he shared that throne with a Delgita. If I so long have listened to these insults, tis that surprise and anger struck me dumb. Thou rival Gisgard, couldst thou hope her love who shares that heroes could e'er stoop to thee? Thou only couldst by thinking my taste erroneous as thy heart is base. Michael, choking with rage. How? How? You wrong me, princess. As my wife and empress, placed on Byzantium's throne. Adelgita, ironically. Byzantium's throne. O oh, fair and tempting gift, O oh, generous proffer. Yet while you make it, to us well, methinks, did you reflect... Unless by Giscard's valour, Byzantium's throne will not be yours to give. Then pardon, mighty prince, if I decline these gracious offers, if I dare prefer glory with Giscard to contempt with thee, and think that he who succours banished kings is nobler than a king whose crimes have banished. Crosses to right. Proud woman, darest thou? Adelgita, with a commanding air. Hold! For Emma's sake... Two days I give thee to provide some refuge. So long I'll hide thy fault from Giscard's vengeance, but on the third this scroll. I thank you, princess, and for two days shall count my life secure, depending on a woman's silence. Oh, I could dash my front on earth for trusting to woman's gratitude or woman's sense. Crosses to right. Adelgita, calmly. Thus ever rail their tongues at female judgment who want that worth which merits female love. But thou, ne'er seeking love, content with pleasure, cursed with indulgence of each vain caprice, suspecting treason e'en on beauty's bosom, and tasting poison each honeyed kiss, mayst thou still think all women false and light, incapable of faith, unfit for trust, and born to be man's slave, not man's companion? Such may they think us still who act like thee. I cannot wish them worse than such to think us. Emma, without, right. Speed, princess, speed. Hark, Emma comes. Enter Emma, right. Oh, speed, swift cuts a bark the billows, and the shores groan with the throng of anxious citizens. Crosses to left. Shall we not hasten? On before, sweet maid. I'll follow straight. Exit Emma. Left. Adelgita, in a decided tone. Forget not what I've said, nor brave the lightnings of my hero's eye. Two roars are Giscard's, ne'er to sin himself, and ne'er to pardon others when they sin. Then dread to meet his wrath, be timely prudent, fly with thy shameful secret, fly and live. Farewell. Crosses left. And thou who speaks so stern and high, Dost thou not fear that? I fear thee. Oh, no. Salerno's daughter was not born to fear. Salerno's daughter? Ay, oh, that name, it seems, has reached your hearing. Then I need not add. Dishonour. And that name have still been strangers. And she, whose veins can boast that hero's blood, and she, whose heart retains that hero's lessons, rest thou assured, thinks nothing bright but virtue. And nothing dreadful but disgrace. Exit left. Salerno's daughter? Should it be? Dercetus. Enter Dercetus. Right. My prince. 
those letters which the dying norman gave to thy care in astra's wood thou hast them the portrait too the portrait find it straight and bring it to my chamber speed Dursitus. exit Dursitus. right michael alone each fresh reflection gives my hopes fresh vigour and if those hopes prove just the game's my own compelled to silence suppliant for my mercy my rival dead but how that young lothair tis plain as heart is immers could i win him why doubt it may not all be won and has not each man his price for those who choose to pay it when offers fail virtue's not strong but dear and that stern honour which disdains a dukedom a sceptre shown will bow and take the bribe exit right end of act one Act Two, Scene One, Gothic Chamber, a sofa on right. Enter Emma. He's safe. He's well. Oh, happy, happy Emma. He's safe. He's well. Flow, dews of rapture, flow. Yet, is it real? Is it not a dream, a charm, a fairy fiction? Oh, heaven, I fear it. Still, then, breathe my lips to hush my doubts. Those words those heavenly words he's safe he's well hark hark i hear his footsteps lothair without emma i hear his voice enter lothair lothair throwing himself at her feet my princess my lothair a moment's pause art safe quite safe lothair weeping eloquent tears what words could speak your meaning safe sweet safe and emma still and ever ever emma's rises you ask not of durazzo's fight i see thee and having thee have all yet say brave giscard is safe my love is conqueror of durazzo and ere the sun ascends his midday chariot the hero's keel will bite on Tranto's shore. Blessed be those words for Adelgita's sake. Even now I left her. Hadst thou seen her rapture, such tears, such sobs, while ever and anon she thanked heaven's grace, too bounteous to its handmaid, then bade her damsels bring her nuptial robes, throw wide her castle gates to mirth and feasting, and still exclaimed, Rejoice! Rejoice, Apulia, your hero lives, has conquered, and returns. Sure, none e'er felt more love. Sure, none e'er gave it to one more worthy. Oh, that great proud day, when, scarred by Grecian fire and hostile myriads, our troops resolved to raise Dorazzo's siege, and thronged to gain their vessels. Swift as lightning flew his guard to the crowded port, and dashing the foremost rebel back. Turn, turn, he cried. Shame to the vanquished, to the victor's glory. No flight, no refuge, no resource but triumph. Normans, you conquer here, or die, he said. Then hurled a firebrand midst the fleet, and swiftly spread the devouring flames from ship to ship. Each trembled, each turned pale, till each and all, fired by the hero's fire with one accord, brandished their swords, struck their broad shields, and shouted, Right, Giscard, right! We'll conquer here, or die! T'was bravely dared, but to my ears, Lothair, the tale of war still bears a painful sound. I see in captured towns but mangled courses, I hear in victory's shouts but dying groans, and think one flower from pity's wreath more precious than laurel groves watered with tears of blood your prince is great is good i own his virtues but still those virtues wear so stern an aspect stern to the wicked lenient to the weak ah friend thy partial eyes no princess no judge by this fact that day we forced durazzo 
while war still raged, the streets all ran with blood, and blazing towers crushed in their fall alike the victors and the vanquished. Mid the tumult, a fierce Varangian from his mother's arms had torn a newborn babe. Wild shrieked the matron to heaven for aid. Alas! Nor shrieked in vain, for his guard heard her. To the tower he flew, and, while his left hand caught the child, his right seized by his yellow locks the wild barbarian, and hurled him from the walls. Next, with his scarf, did Giscard bind the babe's slight wounded throat, and gently on its mother's breast replaced it. Wildly she caught it, sank upon her knee, traced in its blood a cross upon its brow, and called it Giscard. Then his great heart melted, his stout frame trembled, and I saw tears forcing through his closed helm their way. By heaven, I never thought strength so glorious as I thought his weakness, or man worth envying till I saw those tears. O oh, lovely act! Hear it, ye saints, and shower celestial blessings on that hero's head. Michael, without. Where stays the knight? Hark, tis my father's voice, dear friend. Be wary. Fear not. Enter Michael Duca. Ha, Lothair, your mission, warrior. A mighty lord, from Giscard I bring glad news. Byzantium's free, the usurper fled, none knows whither, and the flag of Ducas flows from Durazio's towers. My prince more fully details in these his victory. Presenting letters. How, proud youth? Methinks Byzantium's lord might claim thy knee. Lothair, calm and firm. Your pardon, emperor. Tis not pride restrains me, but knightly honor. Ne'er may Normans kneel save to their own liege lord. Nor e'er from me shall foreign king receive that suppliant homage sacred to heaven, my mistress, and my prince. Ha! Darest thou, haughty stripling? O oh, best father, unbend that frowning brow. He meant no insult, and though his knee withholds its show of duty, Lothair would die to serve you. Sooth he would. Michael, sternly. Emma, retire. Alas, have I offended? Nay, pray you frown not, father. I obey. Exit. Lothair, aside, while the emperor opens his letters. In grief she goes. Looking out. Gods, of what marble must that man be framed who feels not on his heart, like molten lead, each tear his brutal harshness costs a woman? How's this? Michael, furious. Thou strumpet, fortune, wilt thou ne'er blush to follow Giscard's car, chained like his slave? Still wilt thou shower thy laurels on him, and none but him? He won the battle. He seized the town. He gives me back my kingdom. Ere I accept his gift, may the earth open and swallow up that kingdom. May Byzantium, the day he crowns me, fall on him and me, and one vast ruin crush us. Lothair, aside. What can mean this strange and sudden passion? Hear me, youth. Darest thou be great, be happy? Darest thou merit my daughter's hand? Great prince! I know thou lovest her. Darest thou deserve her? Say. Can man deserve so bright a gem? Oh, if he can, say how. Thou canst not say what I'd not dare for Emma. Through Arab hosts, Command me hew my passage, and plant the cross e'en on their prophet's tomb. Drop where Charybdis foams your crown, and bid me retrieve it from the whirlpool's ravenous jaws. Name aught that's strange and dire, some wondrous deed, so hard it joins in one the Herculean labors, so dread its mention makes the hearer faint. Nor doubt, for Ema's sake, that deed I'll do, or perish in the attempt. Indeed, I'll try thee. I have a foe. He from this hour is mine. He must not live. He must not, or Lothair. Declare your wrongs, his name, and straight I'll seek him and hurl defiance in his face. 
rash stripling thou knowest not what thou sayest so great is power his rank so lofty never may thine arm be raised against his in combat what then wouldst thou what meanst thou i should do surprise him sleeping plant in his heart thy sword and emma's thine lothair starting in horror sleeping straight thy crimson hand shall clasp my daughters in byzantium sceptre speak but the words he is dead let me but see thy limbs dyed ghastly beauties in the blood of that loathed basilisk hold name him not what i have heard thee say would now compel me to espouse his cause farewell crosses left stay youth reflect a crown invites thee a crown and emma be wise be wise wise sayest thou prince i will be since he shows wisdom most who loves virtue that narrow cunning whose short sight ne'er looks beyond this orb and present bliss perhaps might count these offers tempting but true wisdom whose prescient eye overleaping time and space descries new worlds pure joys and life eternal this makes me feel man's heaven or hell is conscience this makes me feel that robbed of truth and honour life's charms are lost and that if guilt's the price even emma's heart would be too dearly purchased think what thou wert a nameless base-born orphan think what thou art now a wandering knight whose sword must carve his fortune or he fasts for it gods and must thou prate of guilt and bliss and conscience must thou be delicate thou fondling thou tis ludicrous away i hear and pity the man whose pride it soothes to wound a worm heaven pardon you as i do to the point proudly you ask me what i was i answer born to be that which thou wert born to be a man again you ask me what i'm now i answer that which all admire a soldier nor can i think it blasts a soldier's courage to own he dares not do an act of shame vile thing such notions leave the stock from which you sprang no longer doubtful base were your parents with your feelings base would sooner strike a generous mind methinks not what my parents were but what i am you boast a race by ancestors ennobled i boast a name ennobled by myself pure from all flaws and sacred from corruption read honour's patent written in this scar received while fighting by my sovereign side who dates this line from egypt's earliest kings may boast more ancient titles none more glorious nor can a monarch's veins hold nobler blood than flowed from mine in the service of my country hence slave nor tease me with this cant i hate thee if for such thoughts you hate me prince i know not if most you merit pity or contempt horn sounds but hark the warder from the beacon tower speaks giscard's fleet in sight i go to join him yet ere i leave thee learn this truth from me to love is happiness, to hate is woe. And while such actions as deserve to win thy heart's affections make it swell with venom, thou canst not find worse foes than thine own passions, nor torture others as spite tortures thee. Exit left. Braved by this forward boy, shame and confusion, yet twas ill judged to urge. Now now dercetus enter dercetus right that portrait quick tis here giving it by heavens the same tis well retire exit dercetus right now scape me if thou canst imperious dame this proof secures thee mine yes since I hold her secret, she'll be silent. The interests chains, though fine, are formed so binding, their strength can fetter e'en a woman's tongue. Exit right. Scene two. The port of Otranto. 
an extensive view over the adriatic gulf citizens and peasants of both sexes are grouped in attitudes of expectation shouts as scene opens smile apulia smile, smile once, once more. more all thy grief and fears are o'er giscard's galley seeks thy shore smile apulia smile once more the fleet traverses the background valor now his strength reposes war at length has smoothed his frown duteous love with freshest roses wreathes the victor's laurel crown the bugle sounds grateful prayers to, to heaven ascend shouts of joy the welkin rend while in guiscard's name we blend hero patriot sovereign friend enter lothair left as the chorus ends, a galley arrives from left. Guiscard stands on the deck, attended by Tancred, Reynolf, and knights. All land. Adeljuta enters, richly dressed, with ladies and attendants, right. Guiscard! My Adeljuta! Welcome, conqueror! Welcome to this fond heart! Oh, heaven, how bravely the warrior looks, from foreign wars returned, when propped upon his sword with blood encrusted, he tells his country rest loved parent rest thy son has toiled and thou mayst sleep securely oh, my prince my hero nor at rari's siege looked she less glorious who descried the javelin aimed at her husband's breast and rushing forwards received it in her own then silence silence then tearing from her wound the dart she kissed it fainted yet fainting smiled and smiling cried happy she dies who dies to save her husband blessed am i that i did so oh that moment was worth my whole past life nor would i barter the scar that wound has left for all the gems which ocean's waves have buried noble creature how how have i deserved so rich a treasure embracing her enter michael duca and four guards left michael aside ay seize the present hour ere long i'll dash your cup of joy with bitter hey abulia i come to thank thee but so vast thy claims no words can pay my debt favours less great i own would please me better and my soul shrinks to count my obligations the man who boasts a generous heart ne'er grudges that bliss to others which himself esteems purest and best the bliss of doing good think thus byzantium nor is it much i give thee tis but thine own no more dorazzo's thine and soon the grecian crown o oh, generous spirit which gives a crown as to an orange shame its fire should only warm apulia's rocks unsheathe thy sword drag from his diamond throne arabia's lord and make his neck thy footstool thou needst but will it and tis done no emperor i've nor the power nor will be mine to rule not kingdoms widely stretched but justly governed few be my subjects so those few be happy and if their hearts be mine i've realms enough here break we off to Adelgita who during these speeches seems to welcome the knights best love i marvel much you ask not of that danger adelgita alarmed how what danger thou hast not heard then nothing mark then mark and admire hot was the fight death ranged insatiate o'er the field and his white courser dyed its mane red in blood darts hid the sun and one transfixed my steed he fell oh heavens fell and the usurper marked his fall he reached me i saw his falchion gleam twas raised one moment and all was lost when lo a youth a youth sprang from his horse bestrode me fierce as guards her young the tigress dealt he blows around now here now there on this side and on that till his true sword cut through the usurper's cask who on his courser's neck sank senseless oh, gods then fled the greeks full fast 
the stripling raised me gave me his steed regained durazzo scaled its walls unbarred the ponderous gates and bade the imperial flag stream from its towers loud shouting reign long reign michael ducas o oh, blessed youth o oh, gallant bearing tell me my dear lord what happy mother boasts so brave a son how may i thank him best o oh, name him name him giscar smiling that youth behold him in lothair was he o oh, heart was he indeed he none but he whom adelgitha placed about my person and whom she now must thank for giscard's life advance brave youth adelgitha while lothair kneels to her i fosters reared and loved thee if thou hast cost me care or owest me duty thou hast discharged thy debt she takes a chain with a cross from her neck and throws it round lothair's still wear this jewel and while tis yours remember when i gave it i blessed the hour that you received existence since you have lived to rescue giscard's life michael aside now should she weep right what exhaustless rivers must female eyes contain i fain would thank thee but my full heart rising o oh, honoured happy giscard i'll call from heaven no blessings on thy head thou hast them all possessing aldogita he on whom heaven bestows a wife like her whate'er his merits must be still or paid this pray so fervent can i praise her coldly when that i live and that i merit life are both her gifts left at his father's gate a speechless orphan adelgita to lothair cease nor blame that virtue so nice to he even praise too warm offends it ironically to michael o oh, sir twere excellent did all like you inculcate morals which like you they practised such praise outstrips my merit aside by yon son i'll be revenged insulter enter julian right julian to giscar who has been talking with tancred etc prince the council i come lothar attend me for a while farewell best love warriors farewell and trust me the memory of your faith shall live unfading in giscard's grateful heart well have ye served me and while apulia boasts such sons her genius though hostile myriads storm her sea-beat coasts shall hear them threaten with a smile of scorn then with her trident plunge them in the billows those swords which struck so hard in foreign lands shall strike with tenfold strength to guard their own and here i swear while giscard rules apulia still shall each soldier say who draws his sword my country's free my sovereign's kind and grateful his cause is just and yonder's one loves justice exit with lothair and knights peasants etc adelgita going my gallant giscard lady stay and deign some moment's audience but alone adelgita to her attendants who go off right withdraw to michael coldly speak and be brief michael hypocritically o oh, princely dame unbend that gloomy brow thou seest thy virtues convert grateful you've spared him that remorse which tortures those who pollute the shrine of female honour i've witnessed that remorse that dying night what night some years are past since at the chase in astra's wood i lost my way Dositus alone pursued my steps night's shades were rising when lo a groan we hastened to the place a knight lay stabbed by robbers come he cried strangers approach and while i've breath to tell it hear the confession of a guilty man and vouch for his remorse uh, then he told a tale so sad a maid of noble birth by solemn vows seduced abandoned left to shame and anguish heavy at that hour sat on his soul her wrongs he charged us find her restore her letters paint his grief and bid her pray for the sinful soul of 
George of Clermont. The tale affects you, princess. Adelgita, endeavouring to hide her emotion. Well, it may. I cannot choose oh, but pity that sad lady. What? Pity her, whose guilty heart has revelled in wanton love and pleasure's wild excess. Perhaps her slips of youth forgot on others those fetters now she binds she broke herself perhaps she rules some fond believing husband who thinks her now a saint but when he knows her he'll throw her from his bosom like a scorpion and i'll unmask the warrior named her not name her twas needless for the damsel's letters so fond so sad so full of passion speaking in every line her love and shame so plainly this picture too though seventeen years since then have winged their flight this one like neck must still be arched and fair still must these lips of coral swell ripe and full nor can these eyes have lost all their dark brilliance please you look fair princess nay look i pray Forcing her to look at the picture, she casts a hasty glance on it and starts away in terror. He proceeds in a tone of ironical softness. It seems you know these features. In a terrible voice, while he grasps her by her arm. Now, scorn me if thou darest. Exit left. Adelgita, after a pause during which she seems petrified with horror, looks round her with a confused air then strikes her forehead and exclaims like one in despair i'm lost i'm lost end of act two act three scene one the palace gardens on right a bank the castle towers are seen through the trees in the background Adelgita, much agitated, enters with a letter, followed by Claudia and Dorsetus, right. Adelgita, to herself. This, this to me. To Dorsetus. Tis well. Inform thy lord. Claudia shall bear my answer. Aside. Fiend! Barbarian! Humbly, I take my leave. Exit right adelgita giving way to her emotion oh claudia claudia i'm lost betrayed most cruel chance which threw you defenceless in his power read there and learn his insults and my danger claudia looking on the letter how an audience alone within twelve hours else threats that giscar shall know Oh, there there shall know shall scorn shall hate me i trust not so your heart felt deep contrition your charms your worth his passion all will plead thou think so thou who nursed him nursed the value he sets on female honour oh no i'm lost what must be done this scroll thou darest not disobey it true i dare not hence with these doubts i'll meet him how i'll meet him sink at his feet bathe them with tears implore him to spare a frantic wretch and if he spurns me and my griefs what wilt thou then do die die claudia die yes let the worst before me that last resource has left me still attacker better cease to feel than feel to suffer and death less painful than a life of shame ye powers who read the human soul and long have read remorse in mine melt ye his marble heart heaven grant it yet this conference such close parley such frequent meetings well may raise suspicion true true should any curious ear surprise your converse i were lost a private passage leads to st hilda's cave right there securely 
unseen unheard oh shame and shall i steal from giscard's sight to meet the wretch who dared insult my hearing though the skies rained fire i would not lo where giscard comes and surely in search of me in that hour i see those eyes which seek me now contemptuous shun me if i've a dagger and a heart i swear that hour's my last oh heaven tis said tis sworn i cannot will not live unloved by giscard could he forgive who knows twelve years of truth of lasting love and deep remorse i'll dare it what meanst thou tis the crisis of my fate i'm desperate claudia desperate leave me leave me exit claudia right enter giscard left at length i'm free how tedious seemed the duties which kept me from thy sight but now once more i live for love and thee why darts thine eye that piercing glance as it would search my soul speak my best love thou hast a heart my giscard firm generous just that heart is adelgitha's not virtue's more no more as much for surely virtue and adelgitha form but one oh would that now thy heart were mine mine wholly then pity's sigh should drown the voice of justice and angry honour's flame be quenched with tears what means that wish thou surely wouldst not plead the cause of vice i plead the cause of weakness whose cause a woman's and a wretch what asks she peace honour life and hopes them all from thee from me more plainly speak among my damsels is one whose faults of youth i blush to name when on her cheek sixteen had scarcely shed the bright reflection of its roseate wings while yet she knew not guile but thought mankind pure as her heart for then her heart was pure a wounded youth beneath her father's roof found kind protection long she nursed him watched him pitied and soothed and when she saw him suffer the fond thing wept herself he was a villain prayers sighs tears oaths nothing was spared to win her oh, she listened and believed her heart was weak oh, she fell his heart was false he fled best love thy story both affects and pains oh spare me the tale of sorrows which admit no cure her doom is fixed no power can now recall it honour like life once lost is lost for ever oh doom too harsh which bars out hope and seals the lips of mercy if all think thus what then avails repentance why waste brief life in tears were this life the only life perhaps were wisely argued but there's another world more good more happy and hours of pain are paid with heavenly bliss and life eternal and to thy damsel's tale her lover fled remorse ne'er left her more and oh such anguish such floods of tears i fear they flowed not long who once has fallen will fall again and soon no doubt the tears which her first lover caused her some second kissed away no giscard no though suitors young and fair and rich and noble sighed at her feet and vowed themselves her subjects as diane's statue cold she heard their suit and for that false one's sake rejected all but then came one so past all praise so perfect whom to see and love was equal this wondrous man born to be loved and love this man o'er whom you hold much power ah no 
thou canst not mean it thou canst not wish i should exert that power to place pollution in his arms and bind with hymen's sacred bands a wanton's temples she loves thou sayest darest love a man of honour were she his wife adelgita hastily and with great emotion she is what holds my court one man so dead to shame so blind with passion he with a wanton shares his name he knew not knew not knows not now what sayest thou her passion for her lord her pure strict morals twelve years in virtue past concealed oh monstrous twelve years concealed twelve years what did she feign so well then was she so arch a mistress in dissembling fie fie tis odious crosses to right adelgita extremely agitated yet one word one question say it were thy case should some most dear relation thy friend of youth thy much-loved sister giscar violently mine proceed not mine my sister mine o oh gods were i so cursed i own such a shame and were my heart so base as still to love her i'd tear that heart out kiss god far let her fly from all the world but most of all from me adelgita with a cry of pain my heart will burst just heavens my love my life fear not a sudden faintness nay but thou art wondrous pale and no one's near rest on this bank it is well i'll fly for help going adelgita seated on bank right no no i'll straight return oh claudia claudia exit right adelgita after a pause clasps her hand and raises them to heaven no aid no mercy no resource she remains as if stupefied lothair advances through the trees left but soft the princess here alone and weeping oh lothair lothair throws himself at her feet oh pardon this presumption can i witness those tears nor ask their cause and seek to dry them can i assist console relieve relief my words admit of none oh say not so my arm my soul are thine i'll search i'll find some means may sure be found oh deign to trust me thou canst not doubt the creature of thy bounty the orphaned youth whose life's thy gift michael duca appears at back right thou generous youth how kneeling at her feet yes yes i'll trust thee thou shalt know my danger then counsel aid and save me if thou canst there is a secret here michael duca comes down centre ha oh, byzantium so my thoughts then wronged you not your heart it seems is not such ice but youthful fires can melt it you counted me your dupe <laughs> no no i guess some happy arrival steeled your heart not virtue and when this morn i marked your fond emotion your blush while round his neck you hung yon jewel that rival stood confessed tis plain confirmed Mary, the scene's well chosen. Murmuring streams, soft beds of fragrant flowers, convenient shades, and amorous ring doves cooing o'er your heads where your love kneels before you. Base aspersion! Gods, do I live to hear it! Mark me, Prince. Had living man but Emma's father spoken those words, my sword had struck him dead already. What means thy charge? thou canst not give it credit thyself her spotless virtue hers 
her virtue. <laughs> Tell others that strange tale. Oh, heavens. For me, I found her art. The spell is broken. I know her frail and false. Now Blister sees his tongue who calls her so. Lotha, Lotha, this warmth destroys me. Should I bear with patience to hear thee wronged, thou best and purest? No. He's no man who listens calmly whilst a woman slandered. To Michael. She, frail? Oh, insult past enduring. She, unheard of falsehood. How? Yes, Emperor, yes. Whate'er thy rank, I'm for this hour thy equal. I say it, tis false. And though an angel spoke it, I'd still repeat. The charge is false as hell. What? This to me? Thou contradict me, thou. Soars thy presumption then a pitch so high? Minion, because thy silken locks have snared that fond one's heart. Oh, gods! Yet, yet be wise, the rage which boils my blood. Dost think I fear it? Let thy rage blaze forth. Twill move my laughter. And if thou needst more insults to provoke thee, this makes the measure full. Striking him. Lothair drawing his sword. Draw! Draw this moment! Frantic with passion. Draw and defend thyself! This to thy heart, boy. They fight. Help! Help! Michael, raising his sword to stab him. Thou diest. Adelgita, throwing herself before Lothair. Oh, tyrant, hold, or stab him through my bosom. Giscar, without. Speed, Claudia, speed. My husband's voice. He comes. Now tremble. Enter Giscar hastily, followed by Claudia, Julian, Tancred, and eight guards. Clash of arms! How's this, Lothair? Byzantium, too? Their swords unsheathed. Explain. Speak, princess. I guess God. Terror chokes my voice. I cannot. She leans on Claudia. Yet what fearst thou now, dear lady? The danger's past. Thou art safe. Dost mark quite safe. Tis I who tells thee so. Thy friend, thy servant whose proudest boast will be he saved thy honour adelgita comprehending him oh, then there's hope again her honour saved from whom i wandered near this spot when shrieks alarmed my hearing hither swift i sped and lo thy wife by ruffian grasp detained that ruffian was lothair lothair Adelgita, struck with horror and surprise. Oh, monster! Lothair, confounded. How? How? He drew his falchion. Mine already was bared in virtue's cause, and fierce we fought till by thy footsteps scared. Oh, monstrous! Princely Giscard, if e'er I harbored in my breast one wish, one thought injurious to thy consort's virtue, May heaven's red arm! But why assert my innocence? The princess knows it. To her lips I'll trust me. And by that test I'll stand. Speak, Adelgita. Thy suffrage none can doubt. Declare the truth. Unmask the traitor. And confirm my tale. No, I can bear no more. Unmask the traitor. I will. And show his guilt so black, so hideous, the sickening sun shall veil his orb in clouds, and think mankind no longer worth his care. Hear me, my lord. If there is faith in women, I now assert Lothar is. Michael, interrupting her and showing the picture, unseen by all but Adelgita, on whom the attention of the rest is entirely fixed. Lady, lady, beware. Speak, speak! Michael, pointing to the picture and threatening. Beware. Adelgita, hesitating. Luther is guilty. 
falls on claudia's bosom god did i hear her right michael aside i triumph miss creant o julian bear yon villain hence and chain him deep in the western tower adelgita entreating he saved your life to load it with disgrace ten thousand lives could not repay the outrage bear him away one word by what strange spell yon dark magician in his chains has bound me i know not but i know myself most guiltless and thee prince most deceived i'll say no more do with me what thou wilt whate'er thou dost the memory of thy bounty's past shall ne'er die in thy servant's heart the axe that kills my life shall spare that grateful love i bear thee e'en at the block pray that thou neverest may know i perish guiltless and plead in yonder world of truth and peace my sovereign's cause with him to whom he sent me to adelgita sternly for thee who he stops crosses over to her takes off the jewel which she gave him restores it with a look of mingled grief and anger and goes off in silence julian and guards follow him adelgita aside death is sure less painful i guess god my bosom bleeds my brain turns around loath there his youth his worth i know not what i say but spare him think my love how base the crime of him thou bidst me spare his outrage wronged not thee alone but all thy sex in thee that sex which should have claimed his best protection who strikes his dagger in a female's heart acts kinder than those who stain that female's honour death being happier than a shameful wife since she who lives to shame but lives to suffer o oh, true most true aside to adelgita thou hearst him princess fiend to giscar and can then adelgitha sue in vain to giscard can my tears those tears are fruitless thy lord is firm and while you sue fair princess forget not that i hold your suit an insult to me the accuser me in a low voice speak one more word and all's revealed i hate that boy he dies why then oh, my fate is fixed hope fare thee well i'll cease to weary heaven with prayers for blessings beset with foes caught in the toils distracted i'll pray no more or only pray to die death heals all wounds with life all sorrows cease and heaven will show that mercy man denies exit wildly claudia follow exit claudia ha this strong emotion these tears this frantic anguish in some eyes which seem suspicious not in mine byzantium i judge the hearts of others by my own methinks lotaire might make you justly doubt the prudence of this system well might raise that boy's ingratitude seem slight regret for lavished care and bounty misapplied no emperor i regret not what i've done but that his vice prevents my doing more twelve years i cherished that delightful thought virtue was his and that to me he owed it the dream is flown but shall i count as nothing a dream so long as flattering while it lasted can his foul action stain my fair intent or does his falsehood make my act less generous i must perforce admire such lofty thoughts yet more admire the theory than the practice farewell apulia still pursue thy system still think all men are just all women faithful still fly conviction's light still love still trust still find thyself deceived but ne'er grow wiser exit left ungrateful false lothair but no i'll not lament the good i've done him but that his vice prevents my doing more of man's ingratitude 
let those complain whose bounty flows to serve themselves not others but he ne'er thinks his kindness ill rewarded who acts as virtue bids for virtue's sake exit right end of act three act four scene one a gothic chamber enter giscar followed by emma stay princely giscar and soothe the wretch's anguish a fearful tale has reached me he's false his life is forfeit oh that thought struck like a dagger to my heart i shrieked and wild with anguish hither flew to plead for one the falsest dearest for lothaire what plead for one whose crime i know it all his crime its penalty and my despair oh judge from this how vast my love's excess i know him faithless and adore him still and did lothair possess so rich a gem as emma's heart and throw that gem away what have i done oh thoughtless girl forget my words forget my wrongs my love and only heed my tears and my despair spare him oh spare him cease unhappy fair one to urge a suit i cannot must not grant oh heavens enter julian a grecian vessel rides in the port my prince and brings tis said terms of submission from the rebel emperor vanquished alexius straight i come julian retires up left o giscar leave me not thus Lothair, one look of mercy, one word of hope. Could you peruse my heart, princess? You'd know a king's most painful moments, and when he sees such tears, and must not dry them. Too blessed were monarchs, if when grief implores, they dared indulge that pity which they feel. But he who wisely thinks and justly governs, if prudence and compassion strive, forgets not mercy, though sweet can but relieve a few but justice is that good which blesses all exit he leaves me to despair lost wretched maid where shall i turn me ah how changed my prospects from those so beauteous which were mine this morn lothaire returned was faithful and was emma's he's false his life is lost and mine's a blank he's gone and none observe us down left hear me princess oh leave me to my grief i come to soothe it how speak i guard lo there and wilt thou save him say yes and i'll adore thee born in spain i languish for my native land and wilt thou provide such sums as may from once secure me this night i'll fly from giscar and otranto and make Lothair the partner of my fate. O oh, words of rapture! Speed thy flight, good fellow, my wealth, my gems, rich diamonds, blushing rubies, and chains of pearl which decked a Persian queen, all, all are thine. Beneath the western tower, soon as tis dark, expect me. Thine own hand shall break thy lover's chains. Hark! Someone comes. Farewell till night be cautious exit he shall live then lothaire shall live but oh he's false no matter he lives and lives through me the rest i'll heed not oh could my heart laid bleeding on the scaffold redeem thy life lothaire i'd gladly rend the trembler from my breast and tell thee dying see false one see how fond a heart you stabbed exit enter michael duca and claudia michael holding a letter she has judged wisely had my threats been scorned this night though twere my last and made her story public as the air she breathes st hilda's cavern while giscard is at the banquet it is enough oh send some words of comfort to my friend lothaire she loves him by my hopes of heaven well well i know not though my heart is certain she holds strange power perhaps her prayers may move me to spare lothaire 
repress my fatal passion and yield those letters which but should she fail me she will not be assured o oh, prince show mercy and when thou needst it heaven will show it thee exit go thou dull thing and from experience learn that michael ne'er forgave where once he hated st hilda's cave twill suit my purpose well close to the sea but lo apulia comes ha alcifron enter giscar with the parchment and alcifron offers so fair deserve acceptance and i'll urge it strongly doubt not wait thou apart humbly i thank your highness exit health to byzantium's emperor for that title at length is thine not more in right than fact indeed brought alciphron alexius proffers to throw wide open his portals so thou'lt engage to spare his life and those whose names this scroll contains michael reading constantius focus gretian men potent with byzantium's rabble who bear towards me such deadly hate as tigers bear towards a crocodile and shall they live to prate of slaughtered sons and wives dishonoured and with such piteous tales excite the crowd again to hurl me from my throne no no such men i dare not pardon dare not sayst thou o phrase ill suited to imperial lips kings should fear nothing but deserving censure and he who dares not pardon should not reign gods give me patience is not then enough to know yon cave contains a sleeping lion but must i wait his rousing to dispatch him and feel the monster's teeth before i stab by heaven twere better ne'er to see byzantium than see it in such fear and spread my couch nightly on snakes and art thou yet learned e'en snakes if gently used are rendered harmless and dance obedient to their tasker's flute be the world's friend, and none will be thy foes. Michael, looking on the parchment. What's this? The patriarch Priscillian? That false priest who rudely tore the diadem from my brow and bound it round my rivals? Critias too? Eudoxus, Cleon? Furious. Now by heaven not one, not one of them shall live the slaves the traitors byzantium mine one hour thus thus i'll use them and strew their limbs thus round me tearing the parchment throws it down on left and crosses to right tis enough ho alciphron enter alciphron giscar pointing to the parchment read there your answer alciphron starting prince when first your exiled sovereign sought my aid i saw his sufferings and forgot his faults pitied the monarch and excused the man i thought too in adversity's rough school he sure had learnt some lessons which might teach him to govern well if e'er again he governed i was deceived michael rejects your terms yet tell alexius this for me if e'er on michael's side again i draw my falchion may my right arm sink withered michael stamping in rage how confusion then tyrant do thy worst we fear thee not to giscar but since from him estranged o oh, let alexius hope that apulia's aid giscar with dignity presumptuous greek urge that bold suit no further giscard's sword shall ne'er be drawn in a usurper's cause whate'er his faults there stands your rightful monarch and though my arms no more oppose alexius still shall he find ere long celestial vengeance pursue the rebel who dethroned his king quit thou my realm no more exit alciphron prince thou hast heard me and here our ill-assorted union ends no further aid nay show thy spite at once and send me to the usurper's throne in chains 
Duraza shall reward thee. Emperor, no. What Giskard once has given, he ne'er resumes. Durazzo's yours. T'was conquered in your name, and thither safely shall my barks conduct you. That done, my service ends. To gain Byzantium, what further course you choose? Should that course prosper, I'll first employ my power to wreak on thee my vengeance for the scorn. There lies my gage and token of defiance, and that hatred which here I swear shall to the grave pursue thee, deep, deadly, and unchanged. Stretch to the utmost thy power to vex Apulia and its lord, with barks like lotus clouds o'erspread the ocean. Rob all thy realms of men, and at one effort pour thy whole population on our coasts. Still shalt thou see thy squadrons, like ripe corn, beneath the reaper's scythe laid low, encountering the patriot subjects of a patriot prince, who loves his people, whom his people love. Skulk as thou mayest behind thy brazen bulwarks of hired Varangians and degenerate Greeks, I'll find thee, doubt not. Hew my desperate passage through swords and shields, nor shall my arm no rest till on thy cask my trusty sword has cleft Byzantium's crown in twain. I'll hear no more. Drawing a dagger. Vain boaster, die! Attempts to stab Giscar, who wrests the dagger from him. Ha! A pause, after which he returns the dagger. Take thy steel again, and use it to a nobler end. Michael stamps in rage. How now? Enter Rhinos. Lothair has fled, my prince. The traitor Julian has loosed his chains, and shares his flight. Pursue them, and straight inform me, should Lothair be found. Exit Rhinos. Prince, farewell. We meet no more, except we meet in battle, where one of us must fall. Exit. I triumph now, but soon thy haughty front shall strike the earth in anguish. Now, Dercetus. Enter Dercetus. Say, is the bark prepared? Among the rocks, tis anchored. Call my slaves, collect my treasure, and straight conduct my daughter to the vessel. This night we quit Otranto. How? This night? Durazo is mine, and thither points our course. Speed, speed, my friend. Exit Dercetus. And thou, good doting husband, Dream on securely, while far hence I bear thy soul's most precious treasure. Thus the pilgrim, while near his couch the snake creeps slow and silent, slumbers unconscious on some flowery bank. Sweet is his rest, his dreams are bright when, lo, deep strikes the sting, and the wretch wakes to anguish. Exit. Scene two. A cavern. Through a natural arch in the centre of the back scene, the sea is visible, with the moon shining on it. On the right is a rough-hewn staircase, conducting to an upper gallery. On the left is the mouth of an inner cave, partly overgrown with ivy and other tangling weeds. It is ornamental with a cross, an image, a skull, and crossbones, etc. On the centre flat is the great entrance to the caverns. Julian enters with a torch, conducting Lothair and Imma, by the great entrance, central flat, arch. Julian, to Lothair. Here thou mayst rest in safety, while I seek the bark to bear us hence. But, gentle princess, first let me guide thee back. Lothair, to Imma. And must you go? Oh, first repeat the assurance that no longer you doubt his faith who only lives for you. Say that no more you'll wrong your charms by thinking the heart can ever change that once is yours. And swear by yon fair moon, whose mournful radiance silvers the billows which must waft me hence. No power of absence, and no rival's arts, shall e'er deface Lothair from Emma's bosom. Alas, before your lips affirmed your truth, so much I hoped you true, I half believed it. Yet still such proofs... 
my father's heavy charge, and she, pure honor's mirror, Adelgita, she too attested, hence distracting doubts, for I will credit what I wish were true. Still, dear enchanter, breathe those magic vows which charm to rest the tempest of my bosom. Even though you're false, persuade me that you're faithful. Even though you hate me, swear I'm fondly loved. Close to my heart I'll press the sweet delusion, and kiss the veil that hides such cruel truths. And will these sounds, which on his parting ear vibrate so sweetly, greet Lothair's return? Soon at thy beauty's shrine adoring monarch shall boast, they bear thy chains, and swear in rapture, if crowns are brilliant, tis when Emma wears them. Pleased while you listen to the flattering tale, all thoughts of passion past will fade away, and in some rival's arms thou'lt never remember a wretch like me exists. Unjust suspicions! Oh, would twere in my power at once to crush them, and share thy flight, thy dangers, and thy woes! But, oh, that fearful thought, my father's curse! A father who, whatever his faults to others, has none to me. No, no, I dare not grieve him, and we must part, Lothair. Weeping. Your pardon, princess. Time flies. Your absence may create suspicions whose danger straight i come and whither wilt thou dear friend direct thy wandering course thou knowest the christian kings prepare a potent force to free the holy land from hands of heathens i'll aid the attempt who knows but heaven may grant me to hurl some fierce barbarian from that throne his foul idolatry and crimes pollute oh then how swift my keel shall cut the billows love's purple wings shall agitate the air to swell my sails and waft me back to Europe, in Emma's eyes to read my purest praises, and lay at Emma's feet my heart and sceptre. Come thus, and Emma's thine. But shouldst thou fall, rest thou assured, my love, no rival e'er shall clasp this hand on which thy lips have rested. A cloistered mourner, wrapped in sable weeds, I'll weep thy loss till life be wept away. Farewell. Oh, heaven, farewell. Exit Central Arch. I'll straight return. Wait thou in yonder cave. Exit Central Arch. Exit Lothair into the cave. Adelgita, with a torch, descends the flight of steps. Not come yet. She fixes the torch in a crevice of the rock. Then I've still some moments left to think, to pray. She sinks on her knees and raises her hands to heaven save me a pause after which she rises how dread this silence the night wind chills my blood the pale cold moon beats echoing rocks the murmuring waves michael without show yon torch now oh, he comes his voice seems thunder to my ear now then for life or death Enter Michael Duca, center arch. Lo, where she stands, destined to crown at once my love and vengeance. Now, princess, ha, I miss that high demeanor, inspiring such respect when last we parleyed. No scornful smile, no virtuous lightnings flashing, quick from thy eye to strike presumption dead. Nay, speak. And let me hear thy lips once more, School with condign reproof, licentious passion, And teach how great Salerno's virtuous daughter Sees nothing fearful but deserve disgrace. I'm humbled, weak, a sufferer, and a woman. Now if thou hast the heart, insult me still. Insult thee? No, ungrateful. Those bright eyes still owe my heart hold an unbounded empire. Fain would I hush thy grief. Oh, if thou wouldst, how easy were the task. Look on me, prince. Grief tears my heart. My eyes are swollen with weeping. And thou mayst calm that heart and dry those eyes. Those fatal letters. Yield them to my prayers. Save me from shame. 
and all through life implore heaven on thy head to shower its choicest blessings. Nay, will not trouble heaven, fair dame. In thee I see that blessing which my soul most covets, and mine it must be. I hate thy giscar. I find his dearest gems are thee and honour, and both this night are lost. Adelgita, starting. Meanst thou? This night I'll bear thee hence, and brand the man I hate with shame mortal. Thou'rt in my power. No, tyrant, thou art deceived. I've still one refuge left, and here I swear, ere Giscard's cheek shall know one tear of grief, or blush of shame occasioned by my fault, in death's embrace I'll shelter me from thine, and stab my heart, rather than the Giscard's honour. Michael, ironically. Thou die. Alas, I'm skilled in woman's courage. I know what vows she swears, and how she keeps them. Swords, precipices, poison racks, and flames. Viewed in perspective, she esteems mere trifles. But when the moment comes, she thinks to a pity to stain her skin so very white with blood. So wipes her eyes and lays aside her dagger. Unmanly slanderer! Michael, fiercely. Yet, though fate had sworn the hour which made thee mine should hear thy knell, mine would I make thee still. Oh, barbarian! Fiend! Thou lovest as others hate! Though pleasure fly me, I'll quaff full draughts from sweet revenge's bowl. Living thou art mine. Undead. Thou art not Giscard's, and that's some comfort still. Crosses to right. Adelgita, drawing a dagger. Then take that comfort, and triumph o'er my course. Offering to stab herself. Rash woman, hold! Rests the dagger from her, and throws it on the ground. And now... A treacherous arm! Crosses to right. No power can save thee. No, mid yon rocks, e'en now the vessel waits, destined to waft thee hence. Oh, heavens! Away, then, I'll bear thee to the bark. Adelgita throws herself at his feet. I sink before thee. She kneels to thee, who ne'er yet knelt to man. Have thou compassion. None. None. Adelgita in a terrible voice, while she seizes a dagger which lies near her, and starts from the ground. Then, perish, tyrant! Stabs him. O oh, murderess! He staggers back some paces, and falls senseless on the earth. Adelgita, who has remained in a menacing attitude, starts with horror at the last word. Murderess! <laughs> right. Right, that tis now my fittest name. <laughs> rise, demons, rise. Tis Adogi that calls you. Her hand has signed in blood the infernal bond, which makes her yours for ever. Rise, then. Rise and shake the rocks with horrid mirth, loud shrieking. Rejoice. Rejoice, the murderess is our own. Enter Lothair from the cave, with his sword drawn. Murder was shrieked. Ha! Speak thy business here, and what thou art. Ha, oh, fiends, who comes to banquet on blood among these rocks, who much has drank and thirsts for more? Observe these flaming eyes. Mark the black drops that trickle from the steel. And if thy life is dear, avoid my presence. Advance not, or thou diest. That voice, amazement. Tis she, the princess, sure. Dropping his sword. Luther! Aurora, this still was wanting. Supports herself against the rock. Love and bruise her dagger, and lo! Of course, whose gaping wound, 
Oh, princess, what hast thou done? A deed of guilt, of madness, and of what guilt thine eyes express too well. Oh, nay, give thy hatred words, I fain would die. And speak but thou with truth and force. I hate thee, and lightning would not strike me dead too soon. Hate thee? Oh, hours of bliss, my brain whirls round. I know not what to think, or say, or do. Throws down sword. I can but feel, all guilty as thou art, the world holds nothing which my soul loves dearer. Sayst thou? Thanks, heaven, for this last drop of comfort thrown in my bitter cup. Lothar, Lothar, this heart thou dost not know. Hark, oh, this rock echoes with hurried steps. If here I'm found, my fame, my life are lost. Save me, Lothar. Oh, save me, for I'm so guilty that I dare not die. Oh, save me. Save me. There at hand, fly, fly. Yon steps conduct. Adelgita, attempting to reach them, but sinking back ready to faint and catching at a broken piece of the rock. I cannot. Oh, my strength fails me. My doom is fixed. Lothair, raising her. Take courage. Rest on me. The torch. Taking it in one hand while the other clasps Adelgita. Come, come. Fear not. I'll die or save you. Nay, come. Away. Away. Exeunt by the steps. Enter Imma, hastily, central arch. Fly! Fly, Lothair! Julian is seized, and Reinolf this way hastens. Lothair! He answers not. Oh, heaven, they come! Enter Reinolf, Julian, and eight guards with torches, central arch. Reinolf to Julian. If thou deceivest me, rich, thy life shall pay for it. Not here? In yonder cave. Emma, standing before the entrance of the cave. Stay, Reinolf! stay pursue your search no further on my life the babe who ne'er yet lisped the name of mother is not more guiltless than lothair his flight argues not innocence your pardon princess i needs must on to the guards this way exeunt with four guards into the cave my child farewell dies oh horror faints on the body lothair rushing down the steps it was emma shrieked reynolds entering left followed by the guards lothair guards seize him lothair held by the guards emma part of the guards detain lothair in the background while the rest form a group around Emma and her father. Reinulf, a tall martial figure in armor, stands in the middle, extending one arm towards Lothair. Tableau End of Act 4Banquet tables on right and left, around which are Tancred and the knights, pages attending. Throne and chairs. Giscard on throne. Flourish. Why, this looks well. Fill every goblet high. All fill goblets. O oh, heavens, to sweet or friendship's bowl to talk of perils past, and share our joys with these who shared our dangers. Rising. But speak of war no more. For lo, she comes, whose presence sheds around her peace and joy. All rise. Enter Adelgita, with Claudia and ladies. O oh, welcome, welcome as the wished for port to some long-absent seaman. Why, my soul, hast thou so long deprived me of thy sight? 
Giscard, so ill I merit. I'm so conscious, my heart, that couldst thou read. Giscard, with anxiety. Methinks thou art strangely pale. Yet tis no wonder, that place where thou hast been to-night. Adelgita, alarmed. To-night? That, that place thou knewest then? That religious duties have long detained thee in St. Hilda's chapel. And much I fear the damp from vaults exhaling, the marble walls, the night wind's chilling blasts. Adelgita, with a mixture of irony. A true, true, the night wind. Oh, it is nothing more. <laughs> Twill soon be past. Giscard, taking a goblet from a page. I trust so. Look round thee, sweet. Apulia's champions stand, expecting from thy lips their best reward. Greet them, my love. Adelgita takes a bowl, then suddenly dashes it on the ground. Away! Tis filled with blood! She raves! Giscard, surprised. What means it? Have I deserved this, Giscard? I ever loved thee with such truth, such fondness. I know how monstrous was my fault, but this! Oh, this was cruel! <gasps> cruel! Weeping on Claudia's bosom. Why weep and hide thy face? Turn to thy Giscard, turn to him who loves thee. Adelgita, eagerly. Thou lovest me. I repeat those blessed words. Swear still thou lovest me. Canst thou doubt my love? Adelgita, insisting on the word. Still? Lovest me still? I'll pronounce that word. Still, still. Giscar, surprised at her wild energy. Still love thee more than life. Adelgita, exulting. Why then, ye heavens, in thunder speak your wrath, I'll hear and smile. Conscience, thy sting is lost. He loves me still, and all things else are trifles. Hail, warriors, hail, resume your seats. All sit. Fill high your bowls with wine, swell round me cool music, and peals of bursting joy rise, rise and drown that voice I will not hear. This change so sudden, this frantic rapture. Ask not what it means. <laughs> Thou lovest me, and I'm blessed. Oh, let that suffice. Come, chieftains. I guess God, come. Emma, without. Where? Where is the prince? Adelgita, shuddering. Tis Emma. Tis his daughter. Emma rushes in wildly, and Reinulf. Justice! Justice! O oh, princely Giscard, at thy feet I fall, and clasp thy knees, and call on thee for vengeance. See these torn ringlets, pallid cheeks, eyes swollen and pity me my heart is stabbed is breaking he's dead oh heaven he's dead rise emma rise whom mourn ye can i speak the name and live the assassin's dagger near the rocks he lies pale breathless cold i threw me by his side and strove to warm him against my heart in vain he's dead he's dead my father's dead thy father savagely murdered oh wretched emma how oh, i suffer emma to adelgita ah oh, you weep but had you seen as i did his pale cheeks his gaping wound the cold dews stealing down his brows his limbs convulsed by dying pangs emma emma thou drive me mad confused by rage and horror i know not to console but doubt not, lady, if still Otranto holds the wretch, I'll find him, and take such dread revenge. Forgive my boldness. Fainting through anguish on her father's corpse, the princess knows not, ere we left the rocks, the assassin was surprised. Produce the wretch. Exit Reynolf and returns with Lothair in chains. 
behold him lothair the assassin no prince no on my soul no if aught that's ill had menaced the life of emma's father he had found no surer safeguard than lothair giscar to rhinolf what proofs he's lurking mid the rocks his sword unsheathed found near the corpse their well-known enmity this day's events all all confirm him guilty to lothair what hast thou done base wretched youth thy crime at once robs thee of life and me of honour a sovereign slain a sovereign at my court who sought protection and who found a grave what can i say so deep and dark a gloom involves my fate that i despair to pierce it the snow that falls is not from taint so pure as are my hands from blood my lips from falsehood then clear thy conduct and relieve my heart which trembles for thy love thy life thy virtue who placed thy falchion by my father's course so near him didst thou not hear his shriek for succour knowst thou whose hand he turns away in silence adelgita aside i'll reward him heaven wilt thou not speak i'll answer this but no more as i've a soul to save the hand which slew thy father was not mine then whose barbarian go thou ne'er hast loved me lived in thy breast one feeling spark thou couldst not suffer such doubts to rack her soul who would not grieve thine for the world's wealth inhuman emma to die were better than to cause those tears oh spare me spare me leave me to my fate i know not what to think his oaths his anguish should he indeed be guiltless gracious prince know that on michael's corpse the note was found which lured him to these secret rocks was it not signed it was not but the writing perhaps may lend some cue you counsel well produce the note exit rhinolf adelgita aside i'm lost lothair aside she started then it was hers adelgita in a low voice to claudia now claudia now now resource lothair aside i hear his steps adelgita breathless with anxiety now now lothair aside what must be done oh wretched woman re-enter rhinolf rhinolf kneeling this letter prince lothair snatching it and tearing it shall ne'er betray its writer this makes the secret safe rash youth forbear emma in despair then there's no hope he's guilty what means thy daring act it means i know the hand which traced these lines and murdered michael the cry of murder drew me to the spot where michael breathed his last i seized the assassin whose life was in my power i swore to save it adelgita aside o oh, generous youth giscar peremptorily one word decides thy fate one choice is left thee reveal the culprit or thou diest this instant lead to the scaffold giscar furious tis enough guards seize him yet be advised lothair nor hope to bury this strange mysterious secret in the grave the rack will force it from thee try its strength then thou'lt find that virtue has more power to blunt the shafts of pain than man has art to forge them nor can thy torture so afflict my body as violated vows would rack my mind i'll hear no more bear him to instant death distracting sound emma not one last look force him away emma farewell farewell dragged away by the guards obey me to the block 
adelgita with a dreadful shriek oh spare him spare him he's guiltless giscar starting how adelgita desperate he's guiltless he's my son all start while she rushes to lothair and clasps him in her arms thy son thy son oh gods what is it i hear my shame my guilt my fondness my despair twas i who murdered michael i who now repeat lothar is guiltless is my son please to lay down my life to save my child and die for him who would have died for me embracing him lothair kneeling oh mother adelgitha whose virtues art thou a murderess thou nay never doubt it i own my crime and i desire no pardon the tale thou heardst from me to-day was mine the father of lothar long ere thou sawest me robbed me of peace and honour fatal chance betrayed to michael's heir this dangerous secret his heart was hard my brain was wrought to frenzy he knew and threatened me i feared and slew him unhappy woman what hast thou done my brain twill bear no more brainulf supports him julian brings down chair my son to lothair my son curse me not curse thee kneeling thus i bless thee and swear could drops wrung from my inmost heart repay the blood thy hand has shed giscar recovering himself this instant let all retire except the except the princess adelgita detaining lothair oh no 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 i dare not giscar solemn and commanding adelgitha adelgita in a faltering voice prince i obey exeunt imma guards etc manent giscar and adelgita giscar after a pause i'll not reproach thee fear not i will but say and say it in mild words too i will but tell thee grief impedes my utterance that we must part for ever oh thou knowest me knowest well my dread of shame my sense of honour knowest well my love for thee but what i suffer to find thee false and guilty this oh this thou couldst not know or sure thou hast not erred adelgita in agony heart heart giscar his emotions gradually get the better of him is it true can it indeed be real thou thou on whom i doted thou whose lips i thought ne'er knew a falsehood whose eyes spoke each wish of the heart so plainly in whose arms i hoped to have met death which in thy arms had been so free from pain and now and now adelgita her grief changes into gloomy fierceness and now you hate me giscar wild and desperate hate thee would i did but mark ungrateful mark these groans of anguish drawn from my soul my faltering voice my locks which thus i tear in frenzy in these tears mark these mark these then ask me if i hate thee sinks on a seat overcome by the violence of his feelings <laughs> flew those tears for me speak is god speak falling at his feet flow they for me he motions her to leave him she rises with frantic gesture for that i was to hope it he shuns me he abhors me 
Why delay then? Where are your guards? Come, come, prepare the scaffold, and while I seek it, bid the indignant rabble load me with scoffs and base revilings. Giscar, starting up with looks of horror at the idea. Thee? Tis fixed, and farewell honour, farewell joy. To Adelgita, resolute. Thy hand and mine, partners, in weal and woe. Through life I'll never leave thee, and in death one grave shall hold us both. Imploring pardon, I'll wander by thy side from shrine to shrine, a barefoot pilgrim. Still in toils and perils, my arm shall guard thee, and my voice shall soothe, and when thou weepest to hear insulting crowds, pursue thy bleeding steps with taunts and curses, with my torn hair, I'll wipe thy tears away, and hide thee in my breast from scorn and sorrow. Prince, guess God, as I write, canst thou forgive me? I can. I do. And love me still? Still love thee, and more than light, than life, than fame, than virtue. I'm happy. Guess God, guess God, thus I thank thee. Embracing him. And next, reward thee thus. Stabs herself. Discar, petrified with horror. Help, help within there. Enter Emma, Lothair, etc. What mean those cries? Oh, cruel sight! He receives Adelgita in his arms. Adelgita to Giscar. Thus only could I repay thy wondrous truth, and spare thee the shame of loving where esteem was lost. Fly, fly for aid. No, no. The steel was faithful. Tis my heart's blood which... <sighs> Oh, that pang! Falling. Giscar, hastening to her and raising her in his arms. She dies. Look up, my love, my soul. Look up once more. One parting word, one long adieu, one blessing. Bless thee. Farewell. Oh. I am guilty. Guilty. Pray for my soul's repose. Pray to thereafter. Our spirits in a better, happier world. Heaven. Oh, heaven. Tis past. She dies. Giscar throws himself in despair on the dead body near which Lothair is kneeling while Emma is fainting, supported by Claudia and ladies. Slow music. End of Act 5 Note I make no doubt that Adelgita's fate will be reckoned too severe. In my justification, I must observe that my object in writing this tragedy was to illustrate a particular fact namely the difficulty of avoiding the evil consequences of a first false step it appeared to me that the more venial the offence and the more amiable the character of the offender the more strongly would the above position be proved and the very nature of my object made it necessary that adelgita should be the constant victim of her single transgression in this life and only receive the reward of her many virtues in the life to come but above all i must request that no one will mistake adelgita for a heroine i meant to represent in her a woman with all her sex weakness whose natural inclinations were virtuous and benevolent but who was totally unprovided with that firmness of mind which might have enabled her to resist the force of imperious circumstances accordingly she gives way to them one after another and is led on gradually and involuntarily from crime to crime till she finds herself involved in guilt beyond the possibility of escaping such was my plan though perhaps the defects of its execution may have prevented the reader from discovering it till now 
End of Adelgita or the Fruits of a Single Error by Matthew Lewis.